using apps in the classroom based on Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy was developed to better construct lessons and curriculum based on data about levels of learning and thinking. This ensures that students aren't just memorizing information, but that they are able to understand, utilize, and formulate new ideas about it. The concept is a hierarchy, so at the bottom it shows the lower order thinking skills, and the top contains the higher order thinking skills. Ideally, you would want to teach your way from the bottom up until mastery is achieved. So here is Bloom's taxonomy wheel, which shows each category, the related action verbs, and then the possible activities to assess each domain. So Alan Carrington, a learning designer from Australia, he took Bloom's taxonomy wheel and was able to match each category with different apps that would help to achieve each domain. So we're going to go through a list of the apps, two apps for each domain to use about Bloom's taxonomy. So for remember, we're going to look at intro to letters, and this allows younger students to identify, listen uh, to different sounds, trace the, the shapes of each letter with their finger. Uh, it even allows students to listen to a sound, record their own voice, and then compare the two. Uh, the app is really easy to learn for new technology users. So the next app is Word. Microsoft Word, of course, is such a great app to use for so many of Bloom's learning domains. For the knowledge or remember domain, students can use bullet points to outline, name, and put concepts in order. Students can also match vocabulary to definitions, make timelines, flashcards, and all of this helps to recall information. And early students can also use the word processor to practice spelling and get immediate feedback because it does that little zigzag red line underneath. Understanding and comprehension, SurveyMonkey is an application that allows students to use their own online survey. The survey can be shared electronically and then will collect anonymous data from the participants and summarize the findings. Students tend to enjoy both sides of this application, making the survey and taking the survey. SurveyMonkey helps with comprehension in the classroom by allowing the student firsthand experience in translating, comprehending, and interpreting their own generated data. Google Docs, Google Docs just like Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs is also a word processor, but it's online, so it allows students to share and review material. Google Docs is a great way to practice summarizing, outlining, and explaining main ideas about a topic. Students can even use Google Docs to practice their Cornell note-taking system. So the next domain is the application domain, and an app to use for this is, a good one, is the Wolfram Alpha. And this app has a lot of different computational features, but what I think is most helpful for uh, is seeing a step-by-step -step calculation for math problems. Math can be frustrating if all you know is that your answer is not correct. It's difficult to get that immediate feedback when doing homework other than right or wrong. So Wolfram Alpha allows the students to type in their specific math problems, and then it shows the students step-by-step -step, um, how to solve it. It also gives the option of hints instead of straight up spoilers. And this allows students to be able to demonstrate, solve, and compute math skills. So another app that's good for supporting application learning is the presentation timer. This application, uh, well application skills are all about students kind of taking what they know and applying it to the bigger picture. So for example, if students learned about pollution, uh, what can they do now to apply their knowledge to a real world situation? So students can prepare um, speeches as a way to illustrate their ideas. And Presentation Timer helps students to practice their speeches at home, get comfortable with timing, and be able to self-monitor their public speaking with confidence. What about Analysis? Uh, Numbers is a great app and it's easy to use that allows students to create, analyze, and categorize data to find out patterns and create hypotheses about the meaning about these patterns. Numbers allows data to be transformed into visual charts and graphs, 
and the app contains a bunch of different templates, a spreadsheet entry, over 250 math functions for computation, the ability to add audio, video, images. Uh, another one is iThoughts HD, and this is a graphic organizer application that contains tons of different templates, formatting, clip art, and design tools for assessments, such as cause and effect, compare and contrast, main ideas and details, sequencing, and categorizing. This app will help students be able to analyze, categorize, and demonstrate top topics visually using iThoughts HD. And for evaluation, um, of course, TED Talks. There's a TED app, and it contains thousands of thought-provoking topics discussed by reputable sources. It's more educational and reliable uh, than other video content websites and can be used to help students critique, judge, argue, explain, and evaluate a variety of topics. The app also provides their videos with subtitles in over 100 languages, which makes it more accessible for English language learners to be able to interpret the material accurately. And the last app for evaluation is Shobi. Shobi is an online classroom app that allows students to take pictures, record videos and audio, have class discussion, create and share student portfolios, a bunch of stuff. It's a really neat app and it makes it easy for students to engage in a more informal class discussion. The application makes traditional discussion boards uh, turn into more of like a messenger app, which tends to appeal to students and make it seem more fun. So using technology for discussions tends to bring out a more honest and engaged opinion, and even the least talkative students tend to engage in an online discussion. So students can argue, compare, contrast, interpret, evaluate classroom topics in a more appealing environment than the classroom. And for Create, uh, Do Inc. is a green screen application and it works best with kind of a lime green color. You can use colored paper or poster board that's just kind of taped together. Uh, but it allows you to create new videos, choose a background image, and it's a really fun and creative way for students to synthesize everything that they have learned by designing a video. Another way for this is Story Creator, which is really good for beginners. It allows students to create an ebook by adding text and photos, and students can either type or physically write kind of with their own finger on the touchpad or the computer. Um, there's also a voiceover app, so it's a great way for students to summarize their understanding of a topic by, com by creating a book that combines the main points. So why should we use technology in the classroom? Well, it engages students and creates active learners. It also encourages individual learning and growth, facilitates peer collaboration, prepares students for the real world, and it creates more engaged and successful teachers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope that you're able to use some of these apps in your classroom.